So the next thing we should do is we will make a private Boolean checkpoint reached method. And we're going to use a Boolean reached. We'll set to false by default. And we're going to return reached. So we're going to call this every time we want to be moving our character here. Um, so instead of our update method, we can actually get rid of, I guess I won't get rid of it yet, but in a second we're going to. We're going to check if checkpoint reached, then move our current checkpoint up one, else we're going to do our movement. So that's actually not capital P. So if we reach the checkpoint that we're headed towards, our enemy is headed towards, then we're going to say we're on to the next checkpoint. We want to, we want to get the next directions and we want to go to the, the next uh, corner that we need to turn at. So we're just going to increment our current checkpoint up by one. So otherwise, if we haven't reached it yet, then we're going to keep moving towards that direction. So that'd be x plus equals delta times, oops, delta times checkpoints dot get current checkpoint. Oops, dot get direction. And y will be y plus equals delta times checkpoints dot get current checkpoint dot get y direction. And now we can get rid of these two down here. So now we'll be consistently moving in the correct direction based on the current checkpoint that we're trying to get to. So we're going to remember each checkpoint, if we go in here, it has an x direction and a y direction. And these are based from our current position. You know, since we're telling it, when we're creating the checkpoints, we're based in this x direction, y direction, and where our enemy would be previous to where they need to go to the spot. So we're getting up to date information on our x direction and our y direction every time we move our enemy. So they're going to be consistently moving towards the next checkpoint. So let's go to our checkpoint reached method here. And the thing we're going to check is first, we're going to be rewriting the same thing a lot if we don't do this. So I'm just going to make a tile t equals checkpoints dot get current checkpoint dot get tile. So that's where we're at right here. Checkpoints dot get current checkpoint. We're trying to figure out if our enemy has reached that checkpoint and can move on to the next one. So we're going to check if our x is greater than t dot get x plus three is an arbitrary amount here. And I'll, I'll go over that in a second. And I hate the way Eclipse finishes that for me. And x is less than t, I actually mix it up, t dot get x plus three. This should be minus three right here. And, and I'll explain this in a second, guys. Y is greater than T dot get Y minus three. And Y is less than T dot get Y plus three. So if all of these are true, then we're going to set reached equal to true. So what we're doing here is where x and y are the positions, the current positions of our enemy. This isn't going to work right now because I shouldn't have run that. <laughs> Don't run it, guys. We're in the middle of updating the, the methods, so that's not going to work right now. So x and y are the current positions for our enemy, right? And they, they update every single time the game updates, so it's absolutely up to date. We don't need to get it from anywhere else because we're already inside the enemy class. So we're checking if our x position is greater than the position of the next checkpoint we're trying to reach, minus three. So I wish there was some way I could like, I'm gonna go for it guys, I'm gonna go for paint here. 
And I know I have great artistic ability. So pretend that's a square. And our enemy, <laughs> pretend that's an enemy, is going to the right, okay? So if he's heading this way, we want to check and make sure that his position is greater than the tile position minus three, which would be, say, about here. And it's less than the tile position plus three, which would be, I mean, really be about like here, but for illustration, we'll say it's about here because it's based on the top left corner, but we'll just say center positions. We want to make sure that he's inside this area, which is just barely wider than the actual tile area. And the way, the reason it's a little bit wider is because our speed, remember each enemy has a speed that it moves, so that's the amount of pixels it moves every update, and the, the small decimal we get from our delta method, and the amount of times we're updating every time we draw the screen, might not always add up. In fact, most likely they will not always add up into a perfect factor of 64, which is what our tiles are based on. So if we're on a map, you might have different size tiles, but I'm working with 64 by 64. So if we're on a tile grid, and it's all 64 by 64 tiles, if our enemy comes stomping along here, and we're just going to check if he is greater than this circle, then he might get a little bit too far before we do that next update, because we might move his speed, say his speed is 7 pixels, he might be right here, one update, and then the next update he's right over here. So then he's going to go up, say the next tile is right above him, he's going to start traveling upwards, but he's going to be past the tile. He's going to... This drawing is so bad, guys. I just hope you can... You should probably just not look and just listen to the words I'm saying because I have no artistic ability. But what I'm saying is we're giving it some leeway. Just think of it that way. The three is just an arbitrary number. You might want to like play around with it on your end as well um, until we come up with a way to have a method that just gives us a consistent good number to use. But it's just some leeway to account for the fact that between the speed and the delta and all these other variables, we might not always have our enemy perfectly line up at a 64 pixel spot where the tile starts. So let's go back to our method here. We're checking if our x position is within the variance of three. In fact, I'll say that right now. Check if position reached tile within the variance of three. Oh, the market is arbitrary, as in I just made it up. We're gonna need some leeway. But if it didn't reach that, if it's within all these boundaries, so it's pretty much on the tile of the checkpoint, then we're going to say it's marked as true. And in fact, we just put brackets because we're going to do more than just mark it as true. We're also going to set our x equal to t.getx and set our y equal to t.gety. And if you understood at all what I was trying to explain a second ago, this should make sense because we're checking if even if he's, say, at the position of the tile but plus one or two or three pixels, we want to send him back so he's right on track. So we set his x to exactly where it needs to be um, within a variance of three pixels. So once, once this is all working, I hope that... Let me know in the comments if I'm just confusing you. Um, but we're sending our x and our y to the perfect 64-factor variables that need to be so that it looks on our screen like he's just perfectly following the turns. And so we're going to set reached equal to true. And then if this fails, we're going to not set to true. So by default, it's set to false. And it'll return reached, which is false. So I'm wondering, why did the game crash last time? What else do we need to implement before this works? How about this? Instead of our populated checkpoint list, I think we might be going forever and ever and ever until we get a two back, but that might not always happen. So let's say or so current D is zero equals two, or, which is those two little thing on the uh, the backspace or the backslash key. Oh, I forget what they're called. Um, say or counter equals, I don't know, say 20 for now, another arbitrary number. And we'll put a comment so we remember that.
Let's see if that helped our game. Okay. So we are here and he's moving. Let's speed up these enemies a little bit. So I'm going to go in the boot class. And the speed, I believe, is 6 right now. Let's try to send it to 12. Why are they so slow? Am I taking crazy pills, guys? Or is that not actually increasing our speed at all? Boot 30. Um, is that the speed I'm even setting right now? Yeah, speed. Oh, I'm so silly, you guys. All right, so of course, in the enemy class, when we're moving them forward, right now we're just saying delta times the, the direction. We should be adding their speed at the end of that. That explains it. And we'll set their speed back down to three because 200 would be absolutely ridiculous. I was wondering what was wrong. So now let's try it. All right, so they're going along here and hopefully cross your fingers. All right, so it detected that corner and it's turning up now. And it's going up to the top. And it didn't detect the left turn, so it's going back. But let's see if going down, they detect this turn to the left. They, okay, so they have an issue turning left. So let's see. They go up. Let's try giving it a right turn. And this is part of the debugging process. I'm super glad that they found that first turn. And we probably just have a number incorrectly somewhere. Let's see if they can do these turns now. So start going to the right. This is the upturn. And there's a little, I don't know if you guys can see it in the video, but there's a little like stutter when they turn. We'll fix that. And they make the right turn okay, and then they go down. They should loop back around from this down part. All right, perfect. So I shouldn't say perfect, but huge step forward. So you guys can make crazy elaborate maps, anything your heart can dream of, as long as they only turn up and to the right. <laughs> we just need to figure out uh, why they have trouble detecting left turns. It's probably just uh, fixing one number. But this video has gone on long enough, and I feel like I've already bombarded you guys with so much stuff. Good job, guys, this time, if you're able to keep track of what's going on. You know, it's super confusing. And keep in mind that we're going to go back through this and kind of update it to make it more efficient and also comment all the stuff. So this is just kind of a rough draft, imagine, because we're coding it live. Hey, guys, it's Brian from the future here, which is why I might sound a little bit different. But the new channel, Indie Programmer, is finally up, I'm happy to say. So I'm sorry for the long pause between this episode and the one before it, but I was trying to get this all up and running. Uh, like I said, the last or the end of the last episode, uh, the series was going to continue on a new channel. So the new channel's up, and the next episode is already uploaded to that new channel. So you can go ahead and click the link on the screen here, and it will bring you to the next episode on the new channel, Indie Programmer. And uh, make sure to subscribe to that new channel if you want to continue the series, because this is the last episode that'll be on this channel that you're watching right now. So if you want to continue the series, then make sure to subscribe to that new Indie Programmer channel. And uh, that's it. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys over at Indie Programmer.